The Cavendish Laboratory is the Department of Physics at the University of Cambridge, and is part of the School of Physical Sciences. The laboratory was opened in 1874 on the new museum's site as a laboratory for experimental physics. The laboratory moved to its present site in West Cambridge in 1974. As of 2011, 29 Cavendish researchers have won Nobel Prizes. In the Research Excellence Framework the Cavendish Laboratory is ranked as the seventh equal best physics department in the country. History The Cavendish Laboratory was initially located on the new museum's site, Free School Lane, in the centre of Cambridge. After perennial space problems, it moved to its present site in West Cambridge in the early 1970s. The oak door of the new Cavendish Laboratory is known for its inscription from the Book of Psalms in the Bible. The works of the Lord are great, sought out of all them that have pleasure therein." The department is named to commemorate British chemist and physicist Henry Cavendish for contributions to science and his relative William Cavendish, 7th Duke of Devonshire, who served as Chancellor of the University and donated money for the construction of the laboratory. Professor James Clerk Maxwell, the developer of electromagnetic theory, was a founder of the lab and became the first Cavendish Professor of Physics. The Duke of Devonshire had given to Maxwell, as head of the laboratory, the manuscripts of Henry Cavendish's unpublished electrical works. The editing and publishing of these was Maxwell's main scientific work while he was at the laboratory. Cavendish's work aroused Maxwell's intense admiration and he decided to call the laboratory formerly known as the Devonshire Laboratory the Cavendish Laboratory and thus to commemorate both the Duke and Henry Cavendish. Physical chemistry originally the Department of Colloid Science led by Eric Rydell had left the old Cavendish site, subsequently locating as the Department of Physical Chemistry under R. G. Norrish in the then new chemistry building with the Department of Chemistry led by Lord Todd in Lensfield Road. Both chemistry departments merged in the 1980s. Topic: <laughs> Physical Chemistry. Nuclear Physics. In World War II, the laboratory carried out research for the MOD Committee, part of the British Tube Alloys project of research into the atomic bomb. Researchers included Nicholas Kemmer, Alan Nunn May, Anthony French, Samuel Curran, and the French scientists, including Lou Kowarski and Hans von Halben. Several transferred to Canada in 1943, the Montreal Laboratory, and some later to the Chalk River Laboratories. The production of plutonium and neptunium by bombarding uranium-238 with neutrons was predicted in 1940 by two teams working independently, Egan Brecher and Norman Feather at the Cavendish and Edwin M. McMillan and Philip Abelson at Berkeley Radiation Laboratory at the University of California, Berkeley. Biology. <inaudible> <inaudible> The Cavendish Laboratory has had an important influence on biology, mainly through the application of X-ray crystallography to the study of structures of biological molecules. Francis Crick already worked in the Medical Research Council unit, headed by Max Perutz and housed in the Cavendish Laboratory, when James Watson came from the United States and they made a breakthrough in discovering the structure of DNA. For their work while in the Cavendish Laboratory, they were jointly awarded the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine in 1962, together with Maurice Wilkins of King's College London, himself a graduate of St. John's College, Cambridge. The discovery was made on 28 February 1953. The first Watson Crick paper appeared in Nature on 25 April 1953. 
Sir Lawrence Bragg, the director of the Cavendish Laboratory, where Watson and Crick worked, gave a talk at Guy's Hospital Medical School in London on Thursday, 14 May 1953 which resulted in an article by Richie Calder in the News Chronicle of London, on Friday, 15 May 1953, entitled, Why You Are You? Nearer Secret of Life. The news reached readers of the New York Times the next day. Victor K. McElhenney, in researching his biography, Watson and DNA, Making a Scientific Revolution, found a clipping of a six paragraph New York Times article written from London and dated 16 May 1953 with the headline, Form of Life Unit in Cell as Scanned. The article ran in an early edition and was then pulled to make space for news deemed more important. The New York Times subsequently ran a longer article on 12 June 1953. The Cambridge University undergraduate newspaper Varsity also ran its own short article on the discovery on Saturday 30 May 1953. Bragg's original announcement of the discovery at a Solvay conference on proteins in Belgium on 8 April 1953 went unreported by the British press. Sidney Brenner, Jack Dunitz, Dorothy Hodgkin, Leslie Orgel, and Beryl M. Auden, were some of the first people in April 1953 to see the model of the structure of DNA, constructed by Crick and Watson, at the time they were working at the University of Oxford's chemistry department. All were impressed by the new DNA model, especially Brenner who subsequently worked with Crick at Cambridge in the Cavendish Laboratory and the new Laboratory of Molecular Biology. According to the late Dr. Beryl Auten, later Rimmer, they all travelled together in two cars once Dorothy Hodgkin announced to them that they were off to Cambridge to see the model of the structure of DNA. Orgel also later worked with Crick at the Salk Institute for Biological Studies. Topic: <laughs> Cavendish Professors of Physics. The Cavendish professors were the heads of the department until the tenure of Sir Brian Pippard, during which period the roles separated. Topic: Heads of Department. Topic: Cavendish Groups. Areas in which the laboratory has been influential include. Topic: Cavendish staff and alumni. As of 2015 the laboratory is headed by Andy Parker and the Cavendish Professor of Physics as Sir Richard Friend. Notable senior academic staff As of 2015 senior academic staff professors or readers include Topic: Notable emeritus professors. The Cavendish is home to a number of emeritus scientists, pursuing their research interests in the laboratory after their formal retirement. Topic: Nobel laureates at the Cavendish. Topic: Alumni. Besides the Nobel laureates, the Cavendish has many distinguished alumni, including 